the West Malaysians, especially the Malays at the time, who felt they were also underclassed by the uh, British colonial government. Now, we had a common mission. The common mission was to be different from the colonial rules. And that was to join together and to administer this new federation of Malaysia family. But sadly, as you all know, uh, Singapore seceded out, or was booted out, and what have you. So many uh, arguments to that. But I later found out in a book, and I don't know how authoritative that is, where they said on the 6th of uh, August, Singapore and uh, Prime Minister Tukat Duraman signed a secret agreement to secede away from Malaysia. That means Singapore to secede away from Malaysia. Albeit they should not have a secessionist uh, clause in the Malaysian agreement. Now, that happened, and of course the Malaysian bill to, to remove Singapore was uh, passed and supported by Sarawakian and uh, Sabahan members of parliament at the time on the 9th of August, 1965. Uh, congratulations, Singapore, on your recent Independence Day, 9th of August. So, today, the Sabahans, likewise the Sarawakians, are saying this. Let's look back. Let's review this. Just like in 1965, when Singapore was booted out, um, I can speak for the late uh, Donald Stevens or Tun Fuad. He wanted a review of the Malaysian agreement or the, the terms whereby we formed Malaysia of 1963. But through political maneuvering uh, at the time, he was unable to because he lost his party at the end. And of course, through the passage of time before 1976, he was made uh, the High Commissioner to Australia and, and what have you, and he got lost along the way. The cause became different and um, it became very political in Sabah at the time. Now, come 2013, of course, shamelessly I have to promote myself like James. I believe I was the first one to mention and to push a motion for calling for the review of the Malaysian Agreement. Now, of course, the Speaker, Tan Sri Panikar Amin, allowed me because I went to see him. I must tell what happened at the day. I, I went to Hansard, and there was never any request for the review of the, of the Malaysian Agreement and the terms of our entry and terms of which were proposed by the Intergovernmental Report and the Cobalt Commission. So I took the chance and I went to see the Speaker of the House. Uh, I explained my position and he agreed with me and he said, yes, I will allow you to speak and you present your case. The next day I was able to read it in Parliament, but unfortunately, um, the Speaker presiding that day was not Taj Padikar, nor even the other Deputy Speaker who came from Sabah, but someone from Pahang. Uh, he may not have understood my, my Bahasa because it's really bad. But he probably understood my tax, which I Now anyway, he said, yes, fine, we have met uh, two of the three uh, ingredients to debate it in Parliament, but unfortunately there is, there is no urgency at the moment. Now we got defeated because it is not urgent. Outside the house, I am saying to, to everybody, it is urgent. There is a movement that is angry in, in Sabah. There is a movement that is angry in Sarawak. This is a, either from all divides. For us, I call it a good movement because that's awareness. But for some of my colleagues on the other side, the government will say it's a misguided movement. And hence, they will term it as a secessionist movement, which is wrong and which is misinterpreted. It is not a secessionist movement. But it is a new movement that, believe me, is going to probably continue and continue until the federal government finally accede to this Sabah and Sarawak request to look at whether or not they have met whatever we have asked for during the formation of Malaysia. Now, religion. I don't really like to talk about religion because yesterday I was accused of being anti-Islam. So, and I can never be anti-Islam, no anti-Christian, no anti-Buddhist because we, we are all believers of something. And 
when someone in South, when someone like myself uh, gives an opinion, I am not open. I do not have an opinion of any religion, but I have opinion of people who stops people from talking about facts, talking about the current situation. So, in Sabah today, the demography has drastically changed. I would like you to know more about Sabah now. It has drastically changed because I do not have the current statistics, but I feel what is happening in Sabah. We used to be a society that never talked about you're a Muslim, you're a Christian, you're this and you're that. Uh, we used to be a society where one house had a Muslim uh, follower, in the same house had a Christian, and funnily, uh, non-believers too, in one house. They could all eat together, some, I'm sorry, drink, and then they just look at him and say, hey, that. So, <laughs> um, they, they, they even used to have this, and I'm going to say this up. I mean, I'm not saying say this. I have a cousin who's Muslim, and uh, very pious, very strong Muslim, uh, and he understands the culture. The culture during Kamatan uh, requires uh, merrymaking and, and what have you, and all sorts of foods and alcohols are served. And this cousin of mine, when he has functions, either a birthday function or uh, even, you know, Hari Raya and what have you, he will invite everyone to his open house. He'll be in the front of the house and inside the house. Uh, it's all proper. I love the, 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 the rendang that he, his wife makes. But behind the house will be beers and, <laughs> and, and, you know, and uh, alcohols. And you know, they, for the Shiva's fan, you have a 31 year old Shiva's, not too bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, um, that's the reality of Sabah. And that is the Sabah I know. But today, while my cousin does that still, today there's this funny thing going on in Sabah, where even the Muslims I know are saying this to me. I'm constricted because now I'm judged by people that is not what I, that never understood our culture in Sabah. Or people who judge me because I do this. As a Muslim, I feel constricted. It is his position. He's not happy. Now, I want to go back to the Sabah I knew. Of course, I don't encourage my cousins to drink. He does not drink, for the record. Okay? So, <laughs> he doesn't drink. But he is okay with us drinking uh, a little bit. I, I can't really drink, but again, he's okay. That's my point. But when you constrict that original Sabah that I know and change the way we think, at the same time changing our demography to make one particular religion more stronger than the other, that is not the Sabah I want. That is not the Malaysia I aspire. Uh, my position is we must be the Malaysian agreement. We have to start even at the way we look at religion. The 20 points of the Malaysian agreement and the intergovernmental report clearly stated, clearly stated that Sabah is not bound to, to have any official religion at the time. But through the passage of time, amendments were made both to Sarawak, I believe, and St. James. Sarawak too, right? Uh, where they amended to have an official religion. I think Sarawak is amended, I was reading. It is. It was Sabah and Sarawak. I'm fine with that, it's okay. But what I'm not fine about is this, and I could record. No religion must be imposed over another religion, over other few. The Malaysia that we aspired together gave us equal opportunity or equal position to be able to uh, have opportunities from all walks of life. When there is, a, when there is, I see this in West Malaysia, when there are disasters, when there is a tragedy, Nobody looks at their religion when they help each other. That is the Malaysia that we all aspire to be. Why, can, why is it that we can do it as a micro Malaysia, but not as a macro Malaysia? We have to relook into all this. And that call for the review of the Malaysian agreement is just but one of this. Because if we review it, we will see 
how many Sabahans in the whole of Malaysia were not able to participate in the federal civil service simply because maybe not because he's a non-Muslim or Muslim, but because he's a Sabah. I think even up to a few days ago, I was with one senior officer in the federal civil service. I asked him this question. So many Sabahans are saying in the federal civil service, sorry, it's a problem with politicians. You don't have time. <laughs> what he says, Anders. Uh, see, my wife bought me this digital watch to stop me from talking. <laughs> she said, you can't tell from the dial hands. So, anyway, um, now, I just want to end here, and I guess you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, visit Sabah. See the difference that should be Malaysia. Visit Sarawak too. I love their Kuching Laksa. So, oh, <laughs> visit them, visit us, um, teach your kids, teach your friends, tell your friends that we want a new and better Malaysia. <coughs> a really, really fresh Malaysia, a fresh Federation of Malaysia. So, we are not here to show hostility to anyone in West Malaysia, but we are here to work in convergence with you to put back what Sabah and Sarawak and West Malaysia, West Malaysia should have been when we formed when we form the Federation of Malaysia. I, I just have to end something because Tansi James Masin ended with a uh, uh, quote. Because Professor Andrew Harding, if he was my professor, I would have a kaki. He's from uh, the United Kingdom. I would quote Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson said, It is first of all necessary that we should act in the right spirit. And the right spirit is not a spirit of hostility. Katohadan, thank you. All the best. Okay, we've had two very interesting contributions from our speakers. Thank you both so much. We have a few minutes for your responses and questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from you. Anybody like to start? I just came here to. Thank you.